Hi everyone, it's Chris O'Neill from Sew the Distance and I'm back again with a tutorial on how to make a quilt out of one layer cake. I've done this before with another quilt. I'll show you the picture here. You can watch that video too. This is a little different. We're gonna be doing an hourglass block and we are going to use the entire layer cake for this. You can use any layer cake you want. It doesn't have to be this one. You can also use scraps if you want to. So let's dig in and get started making this quilt. So the quilt we're gonna make will measure 48 inches by 56 inches. So it's a nice lap size quilt. Okay, so let's talk about supplies. You will need a layer cake or you'll need 42 10 inch squares. You'll also need a marking pencil or marking tool of some sort. You will need a ruler that is larger than nine inches and it has a diagonal. I think this is a 45 degree line. I don't know if you can see it, there you go. Down the side, that's gonna be really important when we're squaring up. Again, bigger than nine inches is good. If you don't have a ruler that has this line, you can mark it with some masking tape, but make sure it is a true 45 degree line. Also, another thing that is really helpful for making this block is a longer, skinnier ruler. This is for marking the center point. This happens to be 18 inches long and what, three inches wide, I think. You'll need something that's at least 15-ish inches to mark that center point. You can use the other ruler and just move it up, but this comes in handy too. You'll need all of your general quilting supplies like your rotary cutter and sewing machine and coordinating thread and all that wonderful stuff. And then to finish it, of course, you'll need the backing, the batting, and all of that. Let's get started. We're gonna start by opening up our layer cake and sorting some fabric. It's gorgeous. I love this top fabric, it's so pretty. So there are one of most of these. There's some that there are two of. Let's sort it out and see. Okay, here they all are. Look at how pretty these are. I love the black pinks, that mustardy yellow. It's almost like spring, but not quite spring. So it's it's a perfect, I don't know, you could do a table runner and it would be a perfect table runner for like March or something. It's so pretty. And it is kind of Eastery too, because, is Eastery a word? I'm not sure. <laughs> because we have these, this fabric, which is really cute. And there's a few different colorways on that. I love it. It is so pretty. So our next step is matching the contrasting fabric. In previous videos, if you've seen me do this, I usually do a black and white picture and I look for the lights and darks. We're not doing that this time. We're just gonna look for contrasting fabrics and we need 21 sets of two. So we need a light and a dark, okay? Just so they're contrasting. So for example, this would be a contrasting set because it's the light and dark and even something like, let's see, let's find a light one. This one's pretty light but it's contrasting when you look at it against, say, this, which is a white. We're gonna match up the contrasting squares and we're gonna make 21 sets. And I'm gonna do that now. Okay, I have all of my stacks together and this was a little tricky, I won't lie. You had to kind of play with it and mix and match a little bit to make sure that you got it, but I did manage to do it, so we're ready to go. So now we have these, this stack, there are 21 sets. You can see I have light and dark together or contrasting, like I said. I'm gonna take one of these to show you how to do the next step. And we are going to match right sides together. So pretty sides together of our set. And then we're gonna line it up on any line on our mat. So I personally really like to just pick one in the middle that I can see this happens to be the 10 inch line, it doesn't matter. We're gonna take our longer ruler and place it right on the line. Now I like to draw the center line. Some people don't, they, can, they wanna just go ahead to the next step, that's up to you. For me, it just keeps me on track. I know what I'm doing and it's the way it works in my brain, okay? So we're just going to draw a line. This line's gonna be your cut line. So you don't have to be super careful with like what kind of lead you use or anything like that and just draw a line. Then you're gonna move your ruler over a quarter inch from that line and mark again. Now the reason I 
keep them stacked like this is for two reasons actually. For me, it makes it a little bit more stable when I'm drawing the line, it doesn't wiggle around. And also I know this is a set. Next, I'm going to go a quarter inch from the other side. Okay, so you can see there's a line on each side, a quarter inch on each side. Our next step is important too, and it's something I sometimes forget. So I'm gonna grab some pins, we're gonna pin this together. All right, and what I'm gonna do is just pin to keep them together so they don't shift when I sew. I find that layer cakes in general aren't always cut on the straight of grain and can get a little wonky and that's perfectly okay because we will be squaring everything up. Now you want to pin and avoid these lines because these are where we're gonna sew. So we're gonna sew on that quarter inch from that center line. And I already have one done <laughs> and I used dark, thread just so you can see. So I have this sewn. Next I'm going to set this seam. I find this super important. You can see it's kind of bubbly and if you set your seam it'll get rid of those bubbles. So I'm going to grab my pressing mat real quick and my iron and just set that seam. All right next we're going to cut on that line, that middle line that we have. We're just going to cut right down that line. And then I pull away and it's a nice cut. You can use scissors too if you want to at this step. All right. So now we have two half square triangles. Look at that. Our next step is to press to the dark side. Now, if you have two light fabrics, just press to the darker one. This is super important because we are going to be matching these up and you really want to have them nest. Press it really well. Use some best press. Just a little bit. Best press is like a light starch. It's not gonna distort it. And even if it does, we're trimming these down. Okay, I'm gonna do that with both of these. Okay, I have two half square triangles. This is a great way to make half square triangles too. But we're gonna make them into hourglass blocks. So I'm gonna move that out of the way. And now we're going to place them on top of each other, right sides together, just like this. And because we press to the dark side, that's gonna nest right in here. I can feel it. They match up so beautifully and perfectly. And I can feel there's also a lump here and I wanna look and investigate. Look at that, I could feel that. So let me make sure that's pressed down. Now it's all set and it nests in there perfectly. I also want you to notice these don't necessarily line up perfectly. That's, it's okay. It's gonna be okay. It's gonna be okay. Yeah, you can see it really well over here. Not a problem. Okay, so the next step is to just pin in here to keep it from shifting because I bet you know what we're gonna do next. We're gonna do the exact same thing. We're gonna line this up on our mat, on a line, and I just line up the top one. Again, we have a little wonkiness, that's okay. We're gonna take our ruler, do the exact same thing. Now notice my seams are horizontal and I'm marking vertically. So that's the way you want it laying, and I have pins on the ends. I don't want any pins that are gonna be underneath this ruler that are gonna distort my lines. Mark your middle quarter inch over, quarter inch on the other side of that middle line. And again, we're gonna sew on that quarter inch line, the one from the middle, and I'll meet you back here. All right, that's done, they're sewn. We're gonna take our pins out. We're gonna set our seams. We're gonna cut on that line, just like before. You ready to see it? Look, we have an hourglass block. How cool is that? And you know the best part about this block? There are no bias edges on the sides because sometimes people make these and they leave the bias edges out here and then it gets real stretchy and there aren't on this. But look at that point, it's perfect in there because we matched up those seams and now we're gonna press them and square them up. All right, it's pressed, it's beautiful. That point is on, life is good. All right, now we're gonna square it up. So we have that 45 degree line. We're gonna line that up right on our 
line going this way. We're gonna square this up to eight and a half inches and we're gonna put that four and a quarter inch spot. So I'm going four inches and a quarter over and four inches and a quarter down. Make sure you don't have your half inch marks on the outside. You want your full one inch on the outside. And you're gonna put that point right on that center point. So that means that it's four and a quarter down, four and a quarter across, and we're making sure this line is lined up on our angle. If it's easier for you, you could put a little piece of washi tape or anything that's going to tell you where that point is because that's super important. Then we're gonna take our rotary cutter and we're only cutting this side and this side. And I just realized this isn't straight on my overhead camera, so hang on, let me get it straight because I want you to really see this. Hopefully that's better, okay. <laughs> I'm gonna move these out of the way too. So I'm gonna line that up again and I'm just lining up right on that point, right there, right there. If you can see it, that little point, it's nice and lined up. My angle's nice and lined up and I'm gonna cut these two sides. Okay, whoops. There we go. Okay, lift your ruler. I'm gonna set it aside because this is very important. We're going to take our upper right corner and we're gonna move it to our bottom left. So I'm gonna grab this, turn it like this, and I'm gonna take my ruler again and I'm going to line it up again. It should line up on that four and a quarter really well and lining this up on our eight and a half mark. Get it completely lined up. So I'm looking at the eight and a half mark over here and the four and a quarter and I'm making sure our line is on that line. So that 45 degree angle is on that 45 degree angle line. And we cut. And we cut. <laughs> okay, our blocks, or two of our blocks at least, are finished, yay! Look how wonderful they are. So our next step is to finish up the rest of them. So there's 40 more to go, giving us a total of 42 blocks. I will get to work on these and meet you at the design board in a few moments in YouTube time. All right, here we are at the design board and everything is all laid out, all of the blocks. And you can see that I rotated these. So this is, the hourglass is going this way, then this way, then this way and all the way across. And then the next row, I did the opposite. So I made the hourglass going this way, this way, this way. And this took a little bit of time. I laid it out, I played with it, go back to it. And over like an hour or two, I finally come up with the design. It's just kind of my process. I'm gonna sew this all together. You can't see the last row because of the camera angle. Actually, let me back this up. All right, that's better, I think. I think you can see everything now. <laughs> so I'm gonna sew these rows together one at a time, so I'll have seven rows and I'll sew those rows to each other to get a final quilt top. And I'll meet you back here when that's done. It's finished, oh my goodness, look at this. Isn't this a great quilt top? Oh boy, I love it, love it, love it, love it. It turned out so pretty, it was so much fun to make. So much fun, I had a great time. So just to talk about my process for a minute and then explain the next thing I'm gonna show you, I buy two layer cakes when I'm coming up with a layer cake pattern and I'll play with one of them and come up with all kinds of different designs and, until I finally nail down what I wanna make. And then of course I have a few test blocks in that. The test blocks that I made, I took and made a table runner out of it. Isn't this pretty? I think it turned out great. It allows me to test out the block, like I said, for the videos, but it also gives me a chance to see what kind of quilting I wanna do. And, you know, I like this black binding and then I put a black and white uh, backing on it. So it just gives me an idea of what I wanna do with the project when I'm done. I think I am gonna quilt it this way. Let me see if I can get a good spot that you can really see the quilting. It does blend in. I might use a different color thread. Here we go. You can see the quilting. I think it turned out great and I can't wait to quilt this one. That will be a lot of fun too. Let me know what you think about this in the comments and let me know if you're going to try it. I'm on all the socials so you can see me everywhere under Sew the Distance and I also have a website so you can check that out. I have a newsletter coming out soon. You always get a freebie with my newsletters too which is fun too. I hope you have a wonderful day. I hope you take some time to sew and I will see you real soon. Bye.